Please be seated. Please be seated. Good afternoon. Come on, it's a great day to be in West Virginia. The Gold Mountaineers. Come on, it's your day. Distinguished guests, faculty, staff, graduating class of 2010, family members, friends, and guests. Welcome to the College of Physical Activity and Sports Sciences 2010 graduation ceremonies. Please permit me to recognize our guests seated directly behind me. First of all, Vice President for Student Affairs, Ken Gray. Ken, please wait. Our keynote speaker and basketball legend, Jerry West. <laughs> WVU men's basketball head coach, Bob Huggins. <laughs> the chair of the college's visiting committee, representing over 7,000 outstanding alums, Dr. Mary Weichel. Dr. Weichel. and our Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, Lynn Hausner, Dr. Hausner. You know, graduation is the time in your life, graduates, where you transfer one stage of your life to another. Graduation is also a time to say thank you to your family, friends, faculty, and staff who encouraged and supported you throughout your academic career. At this time, I would invite the family and the friends of this year's graduates to please stand and let us thank you for your support. So family and friends, stand up and say thank you for all you have done to make this day very special. I have the honor and privilege to work with a world-class faculty and staff. You know, they represent the very best that any university could offer to your students and to your family members. Please, faculty stand up and staff, let's say thank you for all your hard work and dedication over these many years. I need to take time for one special recognition. His name is Professor Bruce Wilmoth. Bruce, please stand. Bruce has provided 43 years of service. He's retiring, so Bruce, thank you. And all the best in your retirement. Now graduates, when you talk about the student records office and there's a problem, who do you go see? Carol, so Carol Strait, and Teresa Scafello, stand up, let's say thank you for all your hard work to make the day very special. I also need to recognize all the hosts and hostesses working behind the scenes, so thank you, hosts and hostesses, for making the day very special. And please recognize Marguerite Bostonia. Marguerite does a great job for us, as always. Thank you, and welcome back, Marguerite. And our vocalist for today is Kristen Antolini. Kristen, thank you. She's going to do a great job for us. So graduate of 2010, the education that you received here at WVU has prepared you for a career in a highly competitive global marketplace. I hope that you never forget that your college degree carries rights and duties and a moral responsibility to ask the quality of life for all world citizens. The college degree is truly a cherished commodity. In 2004, only 28% of Americans graduated from college. The 2009 census data noted that only 11% only of Americans had a degree beyond a bachelor's. And 3% had a doctorate or professional degree. Worldwide, about one 
percent of the population holds a college degree. That's one percent. So Nelson Mandela, one of the world's greatest scientists and political activists, said, and I do quote, education is the most powerful weapon that we can use to change the world. I agree 100 percent with that quote. And over time, I have learned to value the comments made by former President Kennedy, who said, and I quote again, change is the law of life, and those who only look to the past are certain to miss the future. So graduating class of 2010 has engaged professionals. I am certain you will use your degrees from WVU and with the experiences you have gained to bring about positive, social, political, economic, and educational change that will move us forward to meet the challenges of the future. So class of 2010, I wish you the very best and hope that you will always remain close to your alma mater, to your college, to the faculty, staff, alumni. Congratulations, class of 2010. It is now my honor to present Associate Dean Lynn Hausner, who present our student speaker, Dr. Hausner. Thank you. It's my honor to introduce our outstanding student for this graduation commencement. Emily Edwards is from Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Her parents are Lynn and Wes Edwards. Since being at West Virginia, she's accomplished many, many things. She's been on the dean's list every semester except one, and in that semester she made the president's list, a perfect 4.0. She won the NASPE Major of the Year Award and was named the 2010 College of Physical Activity and Sports Sciences Student Commencement Speaker. Emily is a peer advisor for the Sport and Exercise Psychology Program and is president of the Sport and Exercise Psychology Club. She will be attending Georgia Southern University to begin work on her master's in sports psychology this fall. It's my great pleasure to introduce Emily Edwards. Emily? I think we could have seated her a little more strategically. <laughs> have you heard the one? <laughs> no, please. Let me just give, yeah. A local sportscaster once said, it's a great day to be a mountaineer, wherever you may be. Well, today, it is great to be a, mountain, a mountaineer, no matter who you may be. Today, everyone in this room is a mountaineer, whether you consider yourself one or not. The alumni and faculty that have joined us for this, this special occasion are mountaineers, not only because they are employed by the university, but because they have played a role in helping us get to where we are today. Families and friends, you are guilty by association. You are mountaineers because you are either related to a mountaineer or have chosen to befriend one. But you have also cheered us on when we have succeeded and let us cry on your shoulder and told us we are the best even though we, may, we thought we failed. And graduates, do I even need to explain why we are mountaineers? We just spent four years at WVU. Some sort of mountaineer spirit had to have rubbed off by now. WVU and Morgantown have provided us with opportunities to learn important life lessons, and some of them have been outside of the classroom. For those of us who have used the rec center parking lot for more than two hours and received a parking ticket, we have learned to manage our time more effectively. <laughs> because of this, we will be able to finish projects or to-do lists in a more timely fashion. Another lesson can be found in the pesky Morgantown traffic. We have all spent countless minutes sitting in the backed up traffic on university, wondering why is it so busy in the middle of the afternoon. But we have gained a valuable skill from this experience. We have learned the value of patience. Patience is a characteristic that will help us move forward with our future goals and will help us deal with anything thrown our way. For those of us who have ever had a class in the Coliseum during a basketball game, 
We have certainly learned to focus on what is important and tune out distractions around us. Though there are fans cheering on the basketball team, we have learned to tune out the defense cheers and focus on the information that is being taught. If we can focus with 15,000 cheering people around us, we can certainly concentrate on other tasks with future dis or fewer distractions. WVU has taught us to be thankful. We're the only college on campus that has the luxury of having free parking right outside our building. Not many things in life are free, especially parking at WVU. So we now know not to take anything for granted and fully appreciate it. We never thought of these moments as learning experiences, but just like the lessons we learned in the classroom, we will take these and apply them to our life beyond WVU. We have all spent plenty of time in Morgantown, so it's hard to imagine life anywhere else. We're gonna have to learn how to celebrate a WVU victory in a way other than burning a couch. We'll have to try our best to describe the PRT to someone who has never heard those letters used together. We're gonna actually have to join a gym because our 10 minute walk to class is no longer considered sufficient exercise. Life outside of Morgantown will be a little difficult to get used to, but we have been given the tools to survive. The knowledge and advice that has been passed on by the faculty is enough to make us confident that we can take on whatever is to come. The relationships that we have made, not only with professors, but also with our friends and the people we have met shows us that we get, can get along with almost anyone. And simply saying that we are alumni of WVU should at least get one comment, positive or negative, out of anybody that we encounter. It may not be easy to answer the consistent what now question, but we are leaving WVU with the knowledge and skills to someday find that answer. There are so many moments that we'll never forget about our time at WVU. Our first football and basketball games, our first class at the Coliseum, our first roommate. Some moments that stick out in my mind are walking into Milan Pushkar Stadium for the first time and seeing every corner of the stadium covered in gold, stepping foot into room 251 and having 50 unfamiliar faces staring back at me and never imagining becoming best friends with my freshman year roommate and living with her for all four years. If I continued with my favorite memories, I would run over my allotted five minutes. So I'll end with one last piece of advice. Graduates, we have this newfound freedom to go try new things and experiences. So use the time and do something you've never done before. Go snorkeling in the Great Barrier Reef, go on a safari in Africa, or just go blow all your graduation money at the Bellagio in Las Vegas. <laughs> but no matter what you do, just remember, once a mountaineer, always a mountaineer. Didn't she do a fantastic job? Uh, we're so proud of her. So on behalf of your classmates, please accept this small token of appreciation. It's a wonderful to work with you. Congratulations, Thank you. Emily. Thank you. Thank you. You, can go back. you can go back to your seat. We'll wait for her to get back. I think we're having a problem with this plan up here. <laughs> Wait, family, we get back. <laughs> Let it go. Ladies and gentlemen, it's truly my pleasure to introduce W men's basketball coach who will introduce our commencement speaker. But did you know, in 1977, Coach Huggins was a graduate of the College of Physical Activity and Sports Sciences then called the School of Physical Education. Did you know that Coach Huggins is a two-time academic All-American and three-year letterman on the W men's basketball team? And did you know in 27 seasons, he's compiled a one-loss record over 70%. But I want you to know, and I've known Coach Huggins for almost 30 years, he truly cares about the welfare of all the players, all the men that he works with. So ladies and gentlemen, as you might imagine, Coach Huggins has a lot of honors and awards. 
He was Conference USA Coach of the Year in 1999. But more recently, get ready for this, 2010 Big East Champions. Come on. <laughs> We're not done. 2010 NCAA Basketball Final Four. <laughs> I'm also proud to say he's inducted into the College's Hall of Fame. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Coach Bob Huggins. Okay. Okay. And uh, Jerry is here if you need it. Okay. Good. I had class with Dr. Brooks, so. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things that, that I could say about Jerry. Jerry being a, a native of, of the great state of West Virginia. The third player to score 25,000 points in the NBA. Voted one of the five greatest players in the history of the NBA, 14-time All-Star. Uh, an All-American here. Our all-time leading scorer, our all-time leading rebounder. I think the most important thing, though, I can say about Jerry is that Jerry cares. Certainly cares about this university, cares about this state. I can remember, I, I can't remember what year it was, but the Final Four was in the Reunion Arena in Dallas. And I'm a young coach, I'm standing out there kind of trying to take it all in. And somebody put their arm around me and I turned, it was Jerry West. Now you have to understand, I had Jerry's poster Hanging up, in my, hanging up in my bedroom when I was a high school player. The only thing I took from, from my house, I didn't have a lot in my, in my bedroom, I was there with two brothers, but I wasn't a lot to take. I took Jerry's picture, it was in my dorm room for the five years that, that I was a, a college player. He was my idol, he's still my idol. Um, I'm in awe of him every time I sit and talk with him. The, the, the knowledge that he has the, the, about not just sports, but about life. You know, and I said when I came back here, it's, a, it's an unbelievable opportunity to come back to your alma mater. And um, I'd like to be sitting where you all are sitting right now and, 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 and do it all over again. I mean, it'd be a lot of fun. But, <laughs> no, it would be, believe me. <laughs> but it's gonna get worse now. No. Pretty soon you're going to have to start paying for the roof over your head and the car and you have to get up and go to work. It's not, it's not what you think it is. Uh, uh, <clears throat> but I said when I came back, what a, what a great thing it is to be a part of this university again. And, and for me, what was really important, the fraternity that we have as former basketball players at this great university. And to be able to put the uniform on, to be able to run out the tunnel, to be able to run out the carpet is something that you remember for life. And I think everybody, the first time I walked in the Coliseum, I wanted to run out like Jerry West ran out. I wanted to play like Jerry played. I w never could do that, but that was, that was my dream and my aspiration. But what I'm really, I'm really proud of is that I can call Jerry a friend because Jerry cares so much about the people from this university and the people from this state. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. Jerry West. Yeah. Um, Bob, I'm overwhelmed by your very generous words. And um, sometimes you really don't know in your life uh, what people think about you. And um, uh, that's the first time I've ever heard you say that. And uh, very touching. OK, I'm going to get on with what I have to say. Some of this is going to be repetitive in the terms of that I had an opportunity in 2006 to, to um, uh, have a chance to address the commencement uh, graduating class here in 2006. But there are things that I truly believe in, and uh, without further ado, I'm going to start. First of all, thank you. Good afternoon, Board of Governors, 
faculty, staff, administrators of the College of Physical Activity and Sports Science, proud parents and families, and congratulations, member of the 2010 graduating class. I'd like to begin by paying tribute to the 29 coal miners who died in the recent explosion at the Upper Big Branch Mine in Montcoal, our nation's deadliest underground disaster in a quarter of a century. As West Virginians, we all know a little bit about mining. My father worked for a coal mine, so I'm certainly aware of what they do. Coal miners are loyal, incredibly courageous, hardworking people who do a dirty, dangerous job that few of us are willing to undertake. Each and every one of them and their families who send their loved ones into danger every day will always have my profound gratitude and respect. In 2006, I had the privilege of giving another commencement speak at West Virginia University. During the speech, I quoted a friend's description of three types of people in the world, and they haven't changed from then. He observed that everyone is either a floater, a fleer, or a fighter. Floaters drift through life, going with the current, but seldom determining their own fate. They lack the courage to follow their hearts and their intuition. They let other people's opinions drown out their own inner voices. They often avoid failure. They often make a lot of money, but the success they have is never really fulfilling. On the other hand, fleers flip from job to job, relationship to relationship, avoiding both challenge and opportunity. Fleers love to blame others, to make excuses, to point fingers when things go wrong. Alone, a fleer is fairly harmless to anyone but himself. Only when they latch onto a floater do they begin to have a real impact. A fleer will bring down a, a floater. A fleer believes that misery needs company. A fleer's worst nightmare is a fighter. A fleeter and fighter are at the optimum ends of the spectrum of self-determination. Which brings me to my youth. I was born and raised in West Virginia. I came from a small town of Shillian, about 14 miles south of Charleston. I was a shy one of the six children. The brother close to my age was almost 10 years older than me. To call my childhood and adolescence difficult would be an understatement. It was a dark time constant struggle, one that easily could have turned me into a fleer. What kept me going was a rich fantasy built around my dreams and aspirations and the one thing I had fallen in love with, and that was basketball. I spent much of my spare time shooting at a hoop nailed to a neighbor's storage shed, not quite what you kids do today. I played incessantly in the cold and twilight, and then listened in bed to Mountaineer radio broadcasts and many times never knew the outcome of the game because the radio would fade in and out. I was so preoccupied with playing my own private game that I often forgot to eat. Didn't weigh very well with my family, by the way. Um, they had to start taking me to a doctor to give me vitamin shots because I wouldn't come home. And it was really about my fantasies and my dreams that I had. My fantasy games always in the same way. Jerry West had the ball, the clock wound down. All eyes were on him. Success was in his hands or failure. He couldn't float. He couldn't depend on someone else. He couldn't flee. There was no one else to turn to. Jerry was the ref, the coach, the fan, and the player. How odd I must have looked talking to myself, cheering myself on. It was my escape, my way out of the cold, cruel world of experience. And I thought I didn't know it at this time. It, it was my way of becoming a fighter. When I arrived at West Virginia University as a freshman, thanks to my ability to play basketball, I was given a chance to come here and be a student. I had three pair of pants, one sport jacket to my name. Um, boy, I've added a hell of a lot more since. You know, I owe a great deal of my success to what I learned here at West Virginia University. 
At one time on my desk, I kept, I kept a quote from the poet Carl Sandburg. Nothing happens unless first a dream. My life over the last half century has surpassed even the wildest dreams of my boyhood. Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. I recently saw that quote on a bumper sticker in California. It was in a car that was belching black exhaust and consuming gas at three and a half bucks a gallon. <laughs> but let's not overlook those minor details and concentrate on the sentiment. Be the change. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do by the ones that you did do. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, explore, dream, discover, and don't be afraid to fail. It's impossible to live without failing at something unless you live so cautiously, like a floater, that you might as well not have lived at all, in which case you fail by default. Failure taught me things about myself that I could have learned no other way. I discovered I was more strong-willed and more disciplined than I had sus suspected. I also found out that I had friends whose values were truly above riches. The knowledge that you have emerged wiser and stronger from setbacks means that you are more secure in your ability to survive. You will never truly know yourself or the strength of your relationships until both have been tested by adversity. You will in inevitably make mistakes. As it's important, as Eleanor Roosevelt once said, to learn from the mistakes of others. You cannot live long enough to make them all yourself. Doors will slam in your face. You must pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and knock again. It's the only way to achieve our goals in life. And believe me, it's very important to set goals. One of the most successful businessmen years ago was named J.C. Penney. The stores are still in existence. Here's what he thought about goals. He said, show me a stock clerk with a goal, and I'll show you a man who'll make history. But show me a stock clerk without a goal, and I'll show you a stock clerk. And it's very true. Not that you necessarily achieve all of your goals, but if you're going to fail, fail big. If you don't, you're never going to make a difference. Ask yourself one question. If I didn't have to do it perfectly, why would I try? For many of you, the biggest obstacles to getting there will be fear that you've carried with you since your childhood. And boy, is this true. The fear of humiliation, of embarrassment, and of ridicule. The point is to learn what you can and move on. In the end of your days, you'll be judged by your gallop, not by your stumble. Life is one long lesson in humility. Just remember that pride makes us artificial and humility makes us real. So be bold and do be prudent, but please take risk in your personal life, in your career, in your travels, in your geographical choices. The fleer knows that fear is a giant fog. It sets on the brain and blocks everything. Real feeling, true happiness, real joy, the fleer can't get through that fog. But if you lift it, then you're on the right, you can be on the ride of your life. A West Virginia student once told me, as a commencement speaker, that college was a great place to learn about risk taking. The speaker asked what he meant. The student replied, have you ever tasted the dining hall food here? <laughs> Boy, I did. <laughs> And we were on a training table, and we got out of there quick. My friend Willie Akers, who's sitting out here, can attest to that. Anyway, after many unexpected decades, <coughs> decades as a basketball executive, and many de decades of errors, missteps, and regrets, I offer a list in no particular order of some of the lessons that life and the world of sports have tried their best to teach me. Number one, life must be fun. Kindness is essential, and you do need to work at both. Number two, smile and be pleasant. This may sound naive, it's not. It's a profound occupational and personal advantage, 
And let me quote, and I'm not sure any of you saw this movie. Some of you young ones never even heard of it, probably. Elwood P. Dowd, the central character in the unforgettable Jimmy Stewart film, Harvey, quote, my mother used to say to me, Elwood, in this world you must be so, oh so clever, or oh so pleasant. For 40 years, I tried clever. I re recommend pleasant. <laughs> Number three, be strong enough to say, I don't know. When you don't know or understand something, and such a time may come even after the superior education you, you have received at West Virginia University, when you don't say no, when you don't know, say so. Don't guess, don't fake it. If you don't have the answer, say so. The following seven words often work out very well for you. I don't know, but I'll find out. You won't mislead your colleagues and people will respect your honesty and self-assurance. Number four, to my wonderful son Johnny who's graduating here today, remember, life is too hard to be lived alone. Find time for your family. You only get one, and I'm sure, Johnny, you say, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and I can hear some of you others out there saying the same thing. A family of your own will change the way you look at life, at your parents, at your grandparents. Oh, now I get it, you'll say. So simply call home. Call your parents, but especially call your mother. And Johnny, my God, stop calling so much. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, texting doesn't count. It does not count as a phone call. <laughs> and check in with your grandparents, often the most loyal, loving, and supportive people you will ever have in your life. And may I ask the graduates to join me in thanking their parents, their grandparents, their caregivers, and those people who made today possible, the people on, on whose shoulders you stand. Work at friendship. Develop a talent for friendship. Friends live a full life. They represent perhaps the purest choices you will ever make. Number five, don't be colorblind. People are different. The world is indeed a rich, open, diverse, multicolored, multi-ethnic, multi-textured, multicultural experience. Declaring that all groups are the same as a deception. Believing that some ethnic groups are better than others is a moral disgrace. We aren't all the same. We shouldn't try to be. Opposite attracts, they also help educate. Finally, number six, help some people along the way. Find a cause you care about. Involve yourself and start early in life. Not, life is not about warming yourself by the fire. Life is about building the fire, and the generosity is a match. Unfortunately, when I went to school, I didn't like to read, and I've developed a tremendous passion for reading today. And there are two books that I would suggest you read. In fact, in my opinion, these are must-read books, not only for you, but for your parents. Even you are a little older parents. They each offer inspirational advice that I feel will help guide you through the next phase of your journey. The first book is The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. This practical guide to personal freedom suggests that you practice these four agreements every day in life. Number one, be impeccable with your words. Speak with integrity. Say only what you mean. Avoid using the word to speak against yourself or to gossip about others. <clears throat> Use the power of your word in the direction of truth and love. Number two, don't take anything personally. I wish I'd known that a long time ago, because I do, and I did, unfortunately. Nothing, other, nothing others do is because of you. What others say and do is a projection of their own reality, their own dreams. When you are immune to the opinion and actions of others, you won't be the vic victim of needless suffering. Number three, don't make assumptions. 
find the courage to ask questions and to express what you really want. Communicate with others as clearly as you can to avoid misunderstandings, sadness, and drama. Number four, best for last, always do your best. Your best is going to change from moment to moment. It will, it will be different when you are healthy as opposed to sick. Under any circumstances, simply do your best and you will avoid self-judgment, self-abuse, and regret. The other book is The Noticer it's by Andy Andrews. This book is about pr perspective as it applies to the most common problems that we all encounter in our race to achieve and the problems that we must go through to get there. I only wish that these two books had been available to me during my formative young adult life. They would have given me a better understanding and better tools for coping in extremely competitive business of professional sports. Civilization is too often an elusive goal. A great idea, one that all of you have ch now charged with making a re reality. Iraq, Afghanistan, the environment, disease, and genocide in Africa. All those issues now seem insoluble as the Korean War did when I enrolled at West Virginia. My older brother David paid the ultimate price in the Korean War, a sense of loss of a young, promising life. David was an inspiration to all who knew him, a, deep religious a deeply religious person that cared only about giving and helping others. And I'm happy to say there's a learning center in here at the university in his honor today. So you must not think the world's problems can't be solved, and, and you must not think that you individually are not the one to solve them. You are. Right now, some of us, some of you are asking yourself, how can I save Western civilization when I slept through Western civilization? <laughs> so the question is, what do you want to be? Or may I put it more grandly, what do you want the world to be? Don't tell me, show me. You're out of school now. Show and tell is over. When your life is graded, show will count a hell of a lot more than tell. Don't leave it to our leaders to solve our problems. I've met our leaders and they're very much like you. Or more sobering still, they're very much like me. Those making the history of our age, for better or worse, aren't all that different from you and me. They take their pants off one leg at a time and read the Sports Illustrated in the bathroom. <laughs> there is no reason you can't make history on your own. Had I known at 22 what I know about authority and trappings of power and what we think traditionally of as success, I've been much less intimidated as about, about going out there in today's so-called real world. I gradually became less worried by what the world thought of me and more comfortable and more confident in my place in the world. I'll tell you who I was, who I am, and who we are. We are West Virginia. Don't ever forget it. I know you won't. You've been raised too well and are, and it's official now, too well educated to make excuse, excuses. Congratulations and thank you all. Jerry, on behalf of the graduating class of 2010 and the entire state of West Virginia, please accept this small token of our appreciation for all your dedication, service, and hard work. You make us proud. Thank you. Mountaineer. And we're not done yet. What we have done is ask each of the graduating class members to sign and autograph the book. So Jerry, on behalf of the graduating class, please accept this Thank token. You. Thank Their you appreciation. <laughs> There's a land of 
calls the podium Vice President King Gray for the conferring of the degrees. Vice President King Gray. Ready? Will the class of 2010 please rise? Candidates from the College of Physical Activity and Sports Sciences. Professionals in your field help people enjoy the benefits of sport and physical activity across the lifespan. Physical activity plays a vital role in improving people's health and well being. Having acquired real world experience in state of the art fitness and wellness facilities, you are well prepared to transform lives through the teaching and administration of sport and human movement programs. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the West Virginia University Board of Governors, I hereby confer upon you the degree for which you have been recommended with all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. As West Virginia University's newest graduates, you may move your tassels to the left side of your cap as a symbol of your achievement. Congratulations. It's that time, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready? Just lined up for Dr. Wada here. I now invite to the podium Dr. Valerie Wada. I also liked the assisting us with the conferring of degrees. If Jerry and Coach Huggins, uh, Vice President King Gray and Mary Weicker, if you'll join us up front here, please. Dr. Hausen will assist Carol and Teresa. We'll also invite the faculty and the cast department, please come forward as well. Michael J. Knox. <laughs> Courtney H. Redelia. <laughs> Lewis Walter Davis Shaw. Clayton Edward Deaver. Zachary Ross Gottfried.
Mashata M. Johnson, Jr. Mashuda, sorry. <laughs> Jamal L. Kennedy. Jonathan Wisbon Kepner. Bradley J. Lohr. John M. McCloskey. Chad Olson. Brandon Robert Robinson. Casey L. Diagento. Casey is receiving a doctorate of philosophy in kinesiology. <laughs> Jason G. Langley, also receiving a doctorate of philosophy in kinesiology. Amanda Allison Metcalf. <laughs> Receiving a doctorate of philosophy in kinesiology. Susan Myrie Ross, also receiving a doctorate. Receiving a Master's of Science in Physical Education, Teacher of Education, Joseph K. Walls. <laughs> Bachelor's of Science in Physical Education, Teacher Education, Thomas Lee Bayshore. <laughs> Michael James Bilikonski. Kevin Daniel Brandt. <laughs> Dean Robert Bryhoff. <laughs> Kurt Daniel Brenner. Amanda Danielle Berner, she's graduating cum laude. Fred Thomas Burton, Jr. Brandy Lynn Carney. Casey M. Dawson. <laughs> Kayla J. Ransblaw. Yeah, 
Caroline Mary Glass. Graduating cum laude, Samuel G. Levine the second. Thank you. Brian C. Molly. Molay, sorry. Molay. Eric J. Nacheski. Christopher L. Paradigm. <laughs> Bethany Margaret Perna. <laughs> Justin Corey Poli. <laughs> She's not here. Michael T. Salinas. Thon Vo. I'd like to invite uh, Department Chair Jack Watson and his faculty to the front, please. Faculty from Coaching and Teaching Studies can take their seats and we'll proceed. Now introducing those students receiving a Master's of Science degree in Athletic Training, Amy Catherine Emmesager. <laughs> Benjamin Michael Anguish. <laughs> Shannon Baldwin. Callie Burkseth. James David Dorneman. Aaron Dagnan. Kyle Eckert. Joshua Nelson. Nathan Roberts. Audra Choval. Now introducing those students receiving a Bachelor of Science degree in Athletic Training. David Robert Boyd. <laughs> Carrie N. Childers. Amy Nicole Christman. Jason C. Coleman. Conaway. Yeah. Benjamin Conaway. Tyler D. Dorsey. Graduating cum laude. Kate Meredith Goler. Graduating summa cum laude. Trevor Michael Jones. Megan Nicole Jurgens. Brian Robert Keller. 
Graduating magna cum laude. Margaret M. Krause. Tara L. McDougall. Bria Lynn Mentis. Tim Turner. Graduating summa cum laude. Also graduating cum laude, Megan Rose Vincent. Graduating cum laude, Taylor Rochelle Wolf. Now introducing those students receiving a Doctor of Philosophy in Kinesiology with a concentration in Sport and Exercise Psychology. Being hooded by Dr. Sam Zizzi, Michelle Bartlett. Being hooded by myself, Justine Vosloo. Introducing those students receiving a Bachelor of Science degree in Sport and Exercise Psychology. Andrea J. Boer. William Harrison Dempsey. Graduating magna cum laude. Emily Edwards. Graduating cum laude, James J. Gallagher. Emily Rose Gofredo. Brad Haas. Alexis Blair Harmon Barber. Casey Elizabeth Hughes. Graduating cum laude, Anna Marie Christine Yeshka. Graduating cum laude, Paul William Adolph Listman Ward. <laughs> Marissa M. Myers. Andrew J. Murray. Carolyn Francis Reddig. Jose A. Salazar. Stephanie Elise Shoup. Danielle Viverka. Jonathan Swenson Vogt. David James Williamson. Lucas Edward Zeems. <clears throat> now introducing those students receiving a Master of Science in Sport Management. Matthew James D'Angelo. Matthew K. Dunlap. Matthew R. Gottfried.
Ira C. Green. William Reynold Kurlavich. Ernest Lamore. Matthew Michael McGowan. Jarrell S. Moore. Adam Joseph Nablo. Lefiefi Philip Joseph Osby. Terry Parks Aarons. Justice David Powers II. Jade Ashley Pratt. Ryan Jeffrey Riddle. Stephen P. Stone. Tyson Kirk Thompson. Justin M. Van Nice. Now introducing those students receiving a Bachelor of Science degree in Sport Management. Graduating magna cum laude, Scott M. Berry. <laughs> Graduating magna cum laude, Aaron T. Brady. Graduating magna cum laude, Michael P. Catu. Ooh, ooh, I'm sorry, skip that one. I got it. I'm sorry. Graduating magna cum laude, Sarah Catherine Burns. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Jason Clark. Evan M. Cohen. Graduating summa cum laude, Jamie K. Coakley. Raydeen N. Corley. Ross S. Costanzo. Graduating cum laude, Sarah Beth Davin. Graduating cum laude, Rudolph Adrian DeVries. Graduating magna cum laude, William Francis Egan II. Jennifer Ray Eisenman. Graduating magna cum laude, Jordan A. Enke. Martin A. Ferrero. Magna cum laude, Colin Mark Farrell. Robert Andrew Fontaine. Graduating magna cum laude, Brian T. Friedhaber. Jordan Marie Gerbatovich. Graduating cum laude, 
Devin D. Gerhardt. Graduating cum laude, David William Graham. Nathan Eugene Graham. Nicholas Adam Halfhill. <laughs> Graduating magna cum laude, Jordan Andrew Johnson. Oh, sorry. Jonathan Andrew Johnson. Cum laude, Zachary J. Lambert. Jeremy T. Lannon. J. Benedict Larmore. Graduating summa cum laude. Ashley Renee Malik. Graduating cum laude. Robert W. McFarland III. Nicholas D. Malego. Nicole A. Mirth. Kate Marie File. John R. Pierce. Michael Joseph Podolinski. Ashton Noel Ramsberg. Marlon Joseph Allen Robinson. Graduating magna cum laude, Justin M. Scott. Christopher S. Stang. Graduating cum laude, Nicholas L. Sterkel. Robin Ashley Ulazalka. Daniel Gregory Voss. Graduating magna cum laude. Randy Josiah Waugh. Jonathan Joseph West. <laughs> Graduating magna cum laude, Eric Scott Wickenheiser. Graduating summa cum laude, William uh, Josiah Wilt. Joshua. Joshua, I'm sorry. William Joshua Wilt. Uh, Stephen R. Wolf. Patrick Joseph Reed. Graduating summa cum laude, John Charles Wright. <laughs> Daniel A. Young. Graduating magna cum laude, Samantha A. Zima.
Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2010. <laughs> Yes! Woohoo! Yeah! Wow! Come on! It's now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Mary Weichel. She is an internationally renowned scholar and aquatics expert. She's a member of the college's Hall of Fame, and she's chair of the college's visiting committee that represents over 7,000 outstanding alums of the college. Dr. Weichel will deliver the alumni charge to your class of 2010. Please welcome Dr. Mary Weichel. This is the charge that is read to every graduate of West Virginia University. We want to make sure that everyone hears these same final words. On behalf of all the graduates of the university who have preceded you, I extend to each member of the class of 2010 congratulations and best wishes. From this day forward, your names are forever linked to West Virginia University. The quality of a university is known by the reputation of its graduates. When employers see that your education has prepared you to excel in the workplace, that will enhance WVU's reputation and the value of your own degree. You will be this institution's best ambassadors. With that in mind, I offer this charge to you, the class of 2010. Work hard, take risks, and don't fear making mistakes. Put your education to work improving our society. Develop a global perspective and apply your efforts to creating a more peaceful and more just world. Honor the sacrifices of those who came before you and do all you can to help those who will follow. Above all, never stop learning. Read, explore, travel, and expand your circle of friends. As you build new friendships, take care to nurture those you have made at WVU. Maintain your connection with West Virginia University. Show your mountaineer pride, not just on game days, but every day in every place life takes you. Return to campus when you can to visit favorite professors and relive precious memories. As you leave today, consider the words of esteemed former WVU faculty member Maurice Brooks, he wrote, thus it is with those nurtured in Appalachia. They leave, but they look back, remembering pleasant things. The land has claimed them, and its ties will not be severed. At West Virginia University, you will always have a home among the hills. Thank you. Good luck. I would now want to ask you to please stand as Christine Antonelli sings the national. Before we begin the singing of our national or um, alma mater, I'd like to say one more time to Jerry West. He did a fantastic job. And I want to thank him for taking time out of his schedule to be with this historical moment. Great speech. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, if you please remove your caps. We'll now stand for the singer of our alma mater. Alma, our alma Oh. 
If, if you'll please remain standing until the recessional, until all the faculty and guests have removed the stage, to the graduates, to the parents, we do have a reception outside. We invite you to stay, stay by, sell all the faculty, and meet some new friends. Congratulations, class of 2010. Stay with us.